Hello and welcome to episode 273 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand More Movies You Must See Before You Die from 1990 on its 30th anniversary Total Recall starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Give these people an ear. I mean, I, I could just do 20 minutes of quotes from this film. So it, many quotes. It's one see of those quotes. See at the party, Richter. See at the party, Richter. You know, hey man, I got five kids to feed. It just, just goes on Two and on. Two weeks. You are not you. You are me. No shit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> the rebels win. All this goes away. And you're fucking making it happen. Just. I don't remember that. Uh, that's the thing. For me, it's like not even the quotable. Just like the, the lines that people don't even think about are just like rolling around in my There's head. There's a lot of funny ones. There's a lot. Consider it the divorce. Consider it the divorce. <laughs> I can't even say it the way it says it. It's weird. What have you been feeding this thing? Blondes. <laughs> hey, you got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. Look who's talking. Yeah. Relax, you'll live okay. longer. It okay. just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Open it's... your mind. So, Total Recall <laughs> is based on a 1966 short story from Philip K. Dick, who also wrote the original material for Blade Runner. So, Philip K. Dick, noted sci fi author, and a lot of his works have been translated to the, the big screen. And I've actually recently read it, and the short story is called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. Which is fairly similar. Oh. It's called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. Oh. Which is pretty similar to the movie in that a guy gets, um, decides to take a, what would you call it? Go, go under a procedure in which a mental implant is put inside his head where he's had a trip to Mars because he wants to go to Mars but he can't afford the actual trip. So he decides to have a memory implant, which is apparently just as good as the real thing. They'll give him like bits of memorabilia from the trip and stuff, photos and all that sort of thing. But then it kind of turns out that, oh, wait, this guy's actually been to Mars before and uh, something's trying to, it's been covered up basically. And by going into his mind to put the implant in, we've unlocked all this stuff that's been covered up by the government, which is pretty much where the film goes. But it, it was really funny to me because in the movie, when Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, Douglas Quaid, goes to this place called Recall to get the memory implant to go to Mars, because he just wants to go there, yet he feels this pull towards Mars. So he gets this thing, he pays for it, they're about to put him under, or they do put him under, and then suddenly he starts freaking out, and he's just like, you blew my cover! And he's like, proper like Arnold, red in the face rage, you know? In the book... Um, Douglas Quayle, I think his name is, is lying down horizontally, very calm, just like steely eyes, just going, you blew my cover. Get out of here, I'll take you all apart. Like, the complete opposite tone as far as... It just seemed like Arnold was just like, what if I do that, but like, angry? <laughs> like, you know, my name is not Quaid. I do that times a thousand. Times a thousand, yeah. So I was surprised, I know that Connie doesn't want me to go on too long about this, but I was surprised to read that the writers of this, or two of the writers of this, were the guys who wrote the original Alien, but then other writers came in, and it was in gestation for many years. And then Arnold heard about this, and he really wanted to do it. And he essentially took over the film, in a sense that he got someone to buy the rights for it. Earned himself a deal for, like, an obscene amount of money. And also control over everything, pretty much. So he picked the director. Like, he had ridiculous control over this film, which I'd never heard before. Mm. Um, so he picked Paul Verhoeven, who had recently done Robocop. And uh, so Usually he was the, the director picks the yeah. So this was like an Arnold project. He kind of took over a little bit, and so there's lots of writers, and you can tell because this isn't like a a Blade Runner where it's all about the story and the concept. It's a sci-fi concept that has an Arnold action movie wrapped inside it, where there's yeah. one-liners, and it's very catered to his style. And at this point in his career, he was really the biggest star in the world, I think. So it's just a really intriguing mix, but I think it's a mix that really works. Like, it's so enjoyable and entertaining. I mean, I don't know, maybe, I know that you know that I love the movie, so maybe you don't enjoy it as much, but... No, I, I think it's a great movie. That's why I, I don't mind revisiting yeah. it every now and again. I, I think this is one of the movies that we've seen more times mm. than a lot of others. I, I don't know, it's, it's just... Yeah. We, we I feel like we see it every three or five years or something like that. Yeah. At least. And uh, it's it's... I, I don't know if it makes it funnier when we know that the lines are coming right. up and we're expecting them. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, I feel like we laugh every time it's one of those lines. But then again, we've also, also been watching this video on YouTube with uh, how many? 160 Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes, yeah. I think. And, and there are so many from this movie. So every time he said one of them, it's like, ha, ha, ha. No. And then the anticipation before it comes up because we know it's coming. And uh, it's just enjoyable from point A to point Z. 
<laughs> A to B? Yeah. Yeah. But that's too short, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> nice try on the analogy there. A to B would have worked, but you just thought about it too much. Like, yeah, and now, no, now it's awkward. Well, not awkward, but just whole, you just it's a whole airbag movie. the whole a, movie. A to B, that's just the beginning of it. That's from him going into the the brain thing. No, it, it's it's <laughs> great. It's it's uh, he's actually acting pretty well in it. I, I, I think Arnold's a really underrated actor. He he, is. he, he does like and he has gotten better with the eight yeah. years. Uh, and I'm not saying this is his best work, but, you know, he, I think he's really good. But and it's not his worst either. No, for sure. But, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, it's a super entertaining film. Like, there's a great cast, you know, Ronnie Cox and uh, Michael Ironside, Sharon Stone. The right mixture of action and comedy. Yeah, it does. I think. Yeah, like, you still, you're still invested in the story. Mm. The comedy doesn't undercut it where it becomes a farce. And then there's that brilliant thing. Like obviously, I've, I'm kind of skimming over the story, but Arnold's character lives on Earth. He wants to go to Mars, gets the memory implant. Things go crazy, and then he ends up realizing that he is actually used to work as a secret agent on Mars. And then he goes to Mars, and then there's this whole big adventure and everything that goes on, and it's about the fate of the planet. But you know, there's that thing where that's kind of what he was signing up for in Recall, which was a memory trip in which he would be this secret agent who would save the world and would get the girl. And so you have this moment where it's like, is this all just part of the trip? Mm. And that's kind of the, the and then fun you blew element. That for me with one of the I don't think I did. Say. I don't think I did. Because... No, because I like the inception part of it where you are allowed to think both. Yeah. But when you said what you said, it made it pretty clear that it's one of the two. And I'm not going to, no. we're not going to spoil what that we'll, is. We'll do a brief spoiler talk at the end of the video. Because I want to, I want to, I mean, it has to be touched on, I think. Quickly. Right. Okay. Um, it takes 10 seconds to say the story. I just did, pretty much. I summed it up. But, um, so, you know, it's. I loved the production design of it. It was one of the most expensive films ever made at the time it was made. Lots of practical effects, like, you know, the scene when he pulls the thing out of his brain and it comes through the nose. I mean, they, I don't know how they could have done that without doing a ridiculously expensive prosthetic head of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It seems like most films he does, he has this prosthetic head, like the Terminator movies. And I mean, what, how big of a ball can you stuff up your nose without it harming you anyway? I know, but like... Can't you just stuff something up there and he can wiggle it around and just make that face and it's bad enough just stuff it, you know? I mean, they, they could have just done it like with camera angles or, or something. just had like. a prosthetic nose. Yeah. Instead no, no, of the no, whole no. face. Yeah, but, but I love that they went to the extra detail to do yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, but uh, to me, it's too distracting. You think? Yeah, because no, it I appreciate. Look I appreciate. Like no, it, it looks like him It's the enough, same with Terminator. It's too different. Ah. And for me, it's just like... Oh, I think it's great. I love, I, I, I love seeing the, the effort that goes into stuff like that. I just I think it's really cool. I think the fat ginger woman is better made when it opens up. And oh, stuff. that's that's an incredible effect. That that's really was good. really... I mean, it doesn't make much sense when you see inside the ear because there's no space for his head to be inside it. But you know, yeah, it's when still it comes a, yeah. out, and I'm just like, <laughs> where did that come where from? Where was he then? Um, In her neck. <laughs> yeah, two um, weeks. Um, teach her more words. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a like. Is that the only thing? It, you it is program? really frustrating. It's so complicated, but you can't make her say more than two weeks. <laughs> and then in the end, she says something else. Hmm? Something like. I'll get ready for a surprise. Yeah. They had, they had that programmed in, but not, but not anything else. See, yeah. so it, it's kind of like, eh, okay. And, and we watched this on the 4K Blu-ray, which I was, I was really looking forward to, and it mostly looked great, but there's a lot of really bad compression, which is, I'll do another video on that at some point. It was a real shame. Uh, I'm sure you didn't notice it because you weren't wearing any glasses, but, um, <sighs> you know. I don't really notice. I think that, that just visually with some of the effects they were doing, the film really holds up. You know, shows its age as well at other times, but there's just oh, that's just a really fucking great sci-fi film, I think. And I think the story does hold up. And even though it is an Arnie movie with all the kind of trappings of the quotable one-liners and everything, I think it still works as a great film, in my opinion. Um, I definitely love it more than it is, you know, a great film, I think. I think I have just... I, I grew up with a movie way too young. Um, and I've told this story before, but like when I was in the bath as a kid, I had this special shampoo for my head because I got dry skin, eczema, and the shampoo is very like, like a waxy kind of brown. It looks a bit like blood. So I would just sit there in the bath on my own just going, and I'd roam it around and go, you call this a delusion? Which is a line from the movie. Like that's, that's the level of like a geek I was about movies as a kid. And also I, I thoroughly remember, burned into my brain, watching the film when I was probably like nine or ten. 
And at the very beginning, he's in bed with Sharon Stone, and she says something like, I'll give you something to dream about. And she just, like, slightly undoes her top and lies backwards. And I remember just, like, feeling like I was watching, like, hardcore pornography. Like, I was just like... Is somebody going to walk in and see me watch this? I couldn't believe, like, how, you know, it was just, it just, I just, oh my god, you know. Well, not that I was looking away from it, don't get me wrong, but it was, like, the most exciting thing I'd ever seen in my life. And I just look at it now and I think, it's just nothing. It's just a, you know, it's just a, it's a... And in the commentary, they're joking about the fact they were trying to get her to take her top off in the movie, which is interesting. And she refused. Um, what did you feel about the three breasts? Uh, well, those are just so fake that you don't really, you know, it, it doesn't quite register, you know. But yeah, I just remember very vividly watching that. And they you had... don't register. You register three times. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Uh, oh, Hank from Breaking Bad. Fun to see him pop up as the guy with the weird eye and everything oh and fun fact uh the um the, the, what was it called the cab joe cab or oh the oh i've forgotten what it's called yeah the the, the android cab the, driver J- joe joey cab no joey johnny johnny, johnny cab, cab. Johnny cab. <laughs> there you go johnny cab um he whistles the norwegian anthem oh yeah i in the car when uh he wakes up after they kick him out of recall hmm i i I remember that because when we watched it for this, I remember remembering the detail and thinking she's about to say it. She's about to I say it. I have to say yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of my, I have to, it's part of my DNA. I can't, yeah, yeah. can't sit there and watch the movie without saying that's, that's Norway right there. It tweaks it a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah. It's acceptable. I also love the score. It's Jerry Goldsmith. So I just had to mention the score because it's the, the great Jerry Goldsmith who did great sci-fi films like uh, Alien and Planet of the Apes. And this is just another extension of that. I love how weird and mystical it is and kind of just it really heightens the moments of like intrigue about the Mars and the pyramid and everything. Uh, really, really great stuff. You can't not mention the over-the-top prosthetics not even prosthetics it's an actual animatronic of when the glass breaks on the 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 visor of the what do you call it helmet yeah the helmet the the i feel like there's another word for it yeah. when you're going out into it so the, the, the beginning of the film it's a dream and then it happens on later on where someone's out in the atmosphere of mars and the 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 glass breaks and their eyes literally pop out of their fucking heads and it's just like that's striking that stays in your, in your mind i think yeah, it looks fake enough for me to be okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like his all oh, 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 stays with me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the voice matches the over-the-top nature of the animatronic, yeah. I guess. Um, all right, so is it a film you should see before you die? Yeah, definitely. Hmm. More than once. Yeah. You don't think so? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I was just okay. su- surprised that you were you so know, like... Luke, I wouldn't watch this every three or five years if I didn't think it was... A... No, I know, but the, the, there's, the diff- there's a line between entertaining and like, what's a great film? And usually I'll, we'll be talking about a film I think's great and you're like, mm, you know, whereas the, I was just surprised that you were like, yeah, like so enthusiastic. No, because it's, it's a movie that I know that even non-movie enthusiasts can enjoy. All right. um, when it comes to movies that I really love and stuff, when they're too special and artsy, that's when I'm thinking I wouldn't recommend it to people mm. on their deathbed. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I think it's a film you should see before you die. So very briefly, the spoilers, you've probably seen the film. The ending, uh, you know, where... About 10 seconds. Huh? I said you got 10 seconds to explain it. No, I thought you said 10 seconds to explain the plot of the film. No. Okay, right. <laughs> There's a lot to go into. I actually made a video. I'll link it somewhere. I made a video for joeblow.com talking about the ending and all of the various theories about it. It's a little bit like the Schrodinger's cat thing. You heard about that, right? Yes. Yeah, right. So it's like, is the, the cat... Is it dead or alive? Right, exactly. It's kind of that way because I feel like the end of Total Recall, it doesn't really tell you, yes, this is all in his head or yes, this is all real. So it kind of is both and is neither at the same time. And it's kind of up to you. Yes, there are clues. There are details. And the one that I told Connie was that at the very that beginning. deal breaker for me. I, yeah, I guess so. But when he gets goes into recall and it's, it's, like an, it's like an off-screen moment of dialogue where the guy working at the lab is like, oh, blue sky on Mars. That's a new one. I didn't. I didn't. And that's the end that. of the film. But, you know, 
It could, because they're, they're saying, didn't you hear, we're doing alien artifacts now. And she's showing the screen of all these alien artifacts, and one of them is like the, the thing inside the pyramid. Maybe they learned some news about the pyramid, and maybe it's like a, a news item, like a theory that there's going to be a blue sky on Mars if no, they use this thing. No, for me that did it. It was all recall. But I did say to you, are you sure you want to know this? And you did say yes, so. <sighs> yeah. So you think that's ruined the film for you, then? No. I no, but I, I, I liked thinking that it was real. Not not real, like real, real, mm -hmm. but movie real. And uh, it, it's like being told that Inception has only one outcome. Well, I think that oh, we've, we've, we've talked, well, we will talk about that. I don't know where, where our Inception, no, we've actually I've already posted it. So yeah, okay. We have already talked about Inception and how I think there is one ending to that. So yeah, but I think that I didn't agree. Okay. We, we didn't agree on the ending. I suppose, but you know, in, in a story that's as outlandish as Total Recall, I, I don't see how you couldn't really buy that it was real. You know, even with the blue sky detail. I mean, that's one piece the of the puzzle. The blue sky detail did it for me because who could ever think of that? But that's maybe because I am so stuck. On how unrealistic it is. Because yeah, of the, because yeah, the it sky look... would never be blue on Mars because there's no ocean, so no water. Mm. The sky is only reflected by the uh, so, and so, that's why our sky is blue whereas on Mars mm -hmm. even if there was an atmosphere it wouldn't be blue so that's what I read. so that's really that's to, the deal breaker for me and it's adding more weight to the idea to you that yeah, it is a dream but how scientific is the movie so maybe exactly. they wouldn't think about that yeah probably maybe not maybe they would no. just be thinking oh they got atmosphere on Mars so they got blue skies yeah potentially hmm <laughs> But I, I, I don't really, I, I never get to the end of the film and I, I never think, ah, oh, well, it was all a dream. Or I never think, ah, but it's all, I just don't really, it's like Blade Runner with the whole, is Deckard a replicant? It's like, there's arguments for both. I, I don't really like to even decide. It's just a fun movie that I enjoy watching. I don't really get too wrapped up in it, you know? I guess for me, it got kind of ruined the second it actually turned blue because I was sat there like, it wouldn't turn blue. Yeah, I remember you saying. You just... it, it was like an interstellar where it's like, what the, what is this? Oh, shelves and stuff like that, bookshelves. I didn't like the ending of uh, Interstellar either. What? The first, the first time oh, the I first watched time. it. Yeah. The second time I decided to accept because all of it was so... It's metaphysical. What? <laughs> it can't be explained. It's like, it's, it's, in, it's, a, it's a different dimension. They looked, uh, they talked to so many scientists on how a black hole would look like and so on. And how it would work with a wormhole, and they, they looked up all yeah, of yeah, these yeah, yeah, scientific yeah, yeah. All that facts. Stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. But and once you then get they them. ended it with all these dimensions. Yeah. And maybe because I haven't read about dimensions, but because for me, it, that doesn't. It doesn't. No. All right. Well, well your interstellar isn't in the book, so just just I want to get into this. So. Everything in it, it's like the whole... Yeah, but we're spoiling it if I go into too much detail. All right, well, if you enjoyed the video on Total Recall, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. If you have seen Interstellar, you can carry on for the next minute or so and we just talk about this. So in Interstellar, yes, they did research stuff through scientific fact and all that and the wormholes and black hole and everything. But once Matthew McConaughey goes inside the black hole, that's when all research goes out the window. And this is just a fantastical science fiction film. And it's a, you know, it's a, a yeah, dimension and a reality that cannot wasn't. be explained. Well, obviously, because we have no data from anything in a black hole or even yeah. near one, but they, they, not, no one's ever been near a black hole. But all the scientists believe that time will work differently when you're close to one, which kind of makes sense in a way. Yeah. But you will never be able to go back in time. Sure. Which is basically what he did. Yeah, but to him there was no there was no time. Time didn't exist. It was just a complete constant. He was just but able to move exist. through move through all these moments linked through his love with his daughter and that's what they talk about the whole film was how love is this unquantifiable thing which is a little bit of a cheesy thing but i love that in a film that is kind of clinical and technical the big kind of thing that's, is that that's why i didn't like it because everything was so technical okay. and everything like that and then that moment came and i was just like what kind of fucking alice in wonderland kind of shit is this yeah it's pretty much what it is yeah yeah and then everything was fine afterwards and that makes sense but it's it, it it didn't hold up for me. So when I watched it the second time, I just decided to accept that that's what they wanted to make out of it, mm -hmm. even though because they have no scientific proof of anything anyway. So I just decided to accept it. But I I think that 
ninety percent of the movie is so like, oh, this is this could actually maybe well it could happen mm -hmm. if you know it might based on what I've read like science wise, and then that part comes up and no. Well, you know, the, they also have the the problem of gravity that gets solved, and then that just you know is the magic thing that you know makes everything yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess you, really, you, you know. can't solve gravity anyway. either. So that makes sense. When you think about it, it's all bullshit, isn't it? But it's it, still a great movie, though. Interstellar does actually link in with Total Recall because I think that Total Recall also has a lot of scientific accuracy as well, which is an interesting thing. So you know, that was a joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just thinking, like, really? I'm never going to bed. <laughs> I cannot get into this right now. Okay. I love the film. It's a great film. It's a film you should see before you die. Um, I could just keep talking about it. There's lots of great scenes and moments and all this, you know, just Benny and, yeah. All yeah, this. but we already finished it because you started talking about Interstellar. So, good night. All right, we kind of finished the video, but I had to mention I love Quato. Fucking creepy as shit. Like, the open. Like that really creeped me out as a kid, like proper. Yeah. All right. Why? Why? Why does he have to be glistening? <laughs> With the ghost of his past. Yeah. He's all <laughs> wet look looking. I think. I think it's the rest of his chest is fine, but the fucking thing coming out of it is. I think it's an incredible puppet, but especially in four K, the eyes are like really. There's not much detail in the eyes when you get in close, and it's a little bit one of the only. Why flaws do they maybe. have to make the guy who has him on his chest look, be a fake too? They uh, made a whole fucking body. They did, they did yeah. Um, I don't they know. They could have just made him come. Well, they did. Yeah. There's certain shots where where it is there, but I don't. I guess just to have the full range of motion, they needed stuff behind the belly. I guess right. So probably when it's the real actor with the the puppet, it's just a non-moving one. But the animatronic one, they needed. They should have all thought of, of a different way. It was distracting. I don't know. No, it wasn't distracting. You got to appreciate how much effort they put into shit like that. Even if it, it is rough around the edges or it doesn't look lifelike, I think that not it, just around the edges. The whole face was rough. Oh, no I, no, I disagree. You can't I can't say edges anyway. when the whole shit is <laughs> looking fucked All right, up. So thank you for watching. We'll leave it there and see you at some point in the next one.